All right, everyone. We are starting our trig unit, and we're going to start off the trig unit with some right triangle trig. You should remember some of this from geometry, uh, the sine, cosine, and tangent, and Pythagorean theorem. Uh, some of you might recognize SOKATOA, and that's what we're doing here. We're going to be solving missing values in right triangles. So we'll get right, we'll uh, get started here, and we'll talk. First thing you got to remember is when we're referencing certain parts to the triangle, which part is the hypotenuse, and which part is the adjacent side and the opposite side. And so you got to have some a reminder of some terms. The hypotenuse is always opposite of the 90 degree angle in the triangle. So the hypotenuse, I would say, is the is the first thing you want to identify. And that, like I said, was always directly across from the right angle. So the hypotenuse is always there. It's the longest side, which makes sense that it's opposite of the 90 degree angle because 90 degrees is the biggest angle in the triangle. The other two depend on where the reference angle is. And so if my reference angle is theta up in the top, then my opposite side there is the one that's straight across from the reference angle. So now my opposite side is the one that's opposite of the angle that I'm using in my when I set up my ratios. And then that means by process of elimination that the, this side over here is the adjacent side. And adjacent, you know, it's it's touching the angle. It makes up one of the rays of the angle. Okay. If I go back to where I started here, and let's say I move the reference angle down to this angle, that's going to change things. What it's not going to change is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse always stays opposite of the 90 degree angle, but now my opposite side is going to be over here and my adjacent side is going to be down here. So you have to know what those terms are and where they are on the triangle with given what reference angle, what angle we're using in the triangle. The first trig ratio we're going to look at is sine. And what sine is is just a ratio of two sides of the triangle. It's the opposite side over the hypotenuse. That's where we get the phrase so from. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Right? That's where the so comes from. If I highlight that here, sine, the S, equals opposite over hypotenuse. There's your so. Just a little mnemonic to remember what the sine ratio is. So here's what we're doing with the sine. Sine of a right triangle is always the opposite over the hypotenuse. So in this case down here, if I'm using 30 as my angle, Okay, where is my opposite? Where is my hypotenuse? Where is my adjacent? Well, my hypotenuse is the 12. My opposite, straight across from the 30, is the 6. And of course, I don't even have my adjacent. It's not even listed there. There's nothing there, so I'm not going to use that. So when you have O and H, you're thinking, oh, so. Okay, I'm going to use sine. So what is the sine of 30 degrees? Well, the way I write this out is I take the sine of the angle, which is 30 degrees, and that's always equal to the opposite side, which is 6, divided by the adjacent side, which is 12. OK, well. If you know your fractions, 6 over 12 is 1 half. So what this says is the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 
one half. Now, we used to, before we had calculators, and even some people I'm sure use these tables, but all of the sine values are located in this table here. If I look at and highlight where we are, we are at 30 degrees, which is right here. And if you see in this table of values, when the angle is 30, the opposite over hypotenuse is always equal to a half. And it doesn't matter what size triangle we have. If you look down below here, we have a smaller triangle, but the ratio of the sides is still going to be one half. The sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite, which is my 2, over the hypotenuse, which is 4. And it still is equal to a half. So no matter what the triangle, if you have a 30 degree angle in it, and it's a 30, and remember this would be 60 because they all add up to, to uh, 180. So if it was a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the ratio of opposite 30 degrees over hypotenuse is always a half, no matter what. A little bit about that. In geometry, you learned about similar triangles. And so if I have two similar triangles, okay, that would mean all of their angles are the same. So let's just say that we have two 30, 60, 90 triangles here. And this one is also a smaller 30, 60, 90 triangle. And really, if you have two angles, really, if you know two angles, you know all the angles. If that's 90 and that's 30 in both triangles, then you also know that this one has to be 60 because they have to add up to 180. So because those two triangles are what we learned in geometry to be similar, okay, if they're similar triangles, that means that the ratios of their sides are always proportional. So if I take this triangle here and say I take AB over AC in the bigger triangle, that's going to be equal to the smaller triangle AB over AC. So like in the previous problem, this was 6 and this was 12 and this was 2 and this was 4. It doesn't matter how big the triangles are, the ratios of their sides, as long as all their angles are the same and they're similar, is always going to be proportional. That is why when we go back to this table of values, we can look at all of these values here in this table and we can say that, all right, well, if I have a different size triangle, I know what the ratio of the sides is going to be based on the angle. Let's look at some different angles. Let's say we have a different right triangle with a 15 degree angle. Well, look at your chart. Look at your table. Where is 15 degrees? It will be right here. That says that no matter what size triangle, the opposite over hypotenuse is going to be the same as 0.2588. So if I take and check each of these, if I take the opposite over the adjacent in each one of these triangles, and I calculate those values, they should be equal to 0.2588 or somewhere between there, somewhere around there. So I will hop over to the calculator and calculate those values. All right, so I calculated those values, and we've determined that they are, in fact, approximately 0.259 or 2588. So every time you have a triangle with those same values, the sine of 15 degree angle is going to be equivalent to 
that number. All right, so that's the sine value. So the next one we'll look at is the cosine. And it's the same exact idea, except for in cosine, we're now using our adjacent and hypotenuse instead of your opposite and hypotenuse. So when you're working with a problem that has the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, then you're going to use your cosine values. And here's a table with all your cosine values. And so let's take a look at the table and find we're using a 30 degree angle. So if we look up 30 degrees in our table of values, the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which is what cosine is, adjacent divided by hypotenuse, that's your ka, that's where you get your ka from, so ka toa. So that ratio will always be equal to 0.866, which means if I take this example here and I, and I calculate this ratio, which will be 10.39 divided by 12, that will equal 0.866. No matter how big or small the triangle is. So every triangle that has a 30 degree angle in it, the ratio of the sides, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side, are going to be equal to 0 0.866, which that information will allow us to find missing sides and angles uh, for any triangle that's missing any 30 degree. 30, 60, 90, that's missing a side. Okay, Same thing for if we use a different angle. Let's go to 15, which we just talked about with sine. If we take 15, we look up 15 in our table, that's 0.9659. Okay, well, 0.9659 is a ratio that is always going to be equal to, in a 15 degree angle in a right triangle, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Same thing, just different values. So no matter what the triangle, we could do an infinite amount of different triangles here, but that ratio would always be 0.9659, no matter what.